Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. We're thrilled to have young adult author Sarah Milnowski with her new middle grade novel in her series, Whatever After. It's called Dream On. So I want to know, since this is the first book, Dream On, in the Whatever After series, what are your readers saying You know, now that book's been out, I think, only a week though, right? Yeah, or, just a week. Just a week. So I guess there's not, not been too much time. But w w what are you hearing? Because you know they want more and more and more. <laughs> When's the next one coming? You know. Yeah. So. Well, I've been getting emails. Um, they're really excited that Abby, the uh, the main character in this book, that her best friend came along in this one. Right. And the series is about um, Abby, who and her little brother, who fall into fairy tales and mess them up, and then have to help the characters find new happy endings. Right. Um, so this is the first time that someone besides Abby and Jonah, the little brother, have gone into the tale. Right. So I've been getting a lot of excited, you know, emails about that. And of course, they want to know when the next book is coming out. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. So, so, the, so the new best friend is Robin. Yes. And of course, we know by Dream On mm -hmm. that everybody mm -hmm. can kind of guess which fairy, fairy tale uh -huh. this is. Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah, Jack and the Beanstalk. Beanstalk. <laughs> dream On about that big beanstalk. Now, this is Dream On, you know, so Sleeping Beauty. Right. So we don't want to do spoilers, but something happens to Robin, the friend. Yes, something <laughs> happens to Robin. So she may accidentally have messed up the story. They messed yeah. up the story. And that's what I love about, about this whole series. But you know, you know, when you think about the original Sleeping Beauty, mm -hmm. or you think about the Charles, and I probably will, you're, you're from Montreal, yes. so you probably know the, the pronunciation. Oh. Uh, yeah, Perot, 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 yeah. Perot, whatever. <laughs> you know, or even the Grimm version, right. you know, when you think of, of that. Um, you know, looking at those fairy tales and so many different versions over the years, right. and, and and just wondering, you know, there's so many ways you can tell this story, and and wondering what aspects of the original story do you go back and read the original when you're doing each one of the books in this series? I do. I actually go back and reread um, all the different versions that I can oh, find. Okay. Um, because, well, it depends. When I started the series, the mm -hmm. first book, I stayed very, very close to the original Snow White, um, and then. Um, when, when I did Cinderella for book two, I, I, I realized that I wanted to have the flexibility to, to use stuff from different from different versions. I didn't want to really tie myself down sure. so much. So sure. I, as the, as the series has gone on, I've, t I've taken more and more you know leeway and done whatever I pretty much wanted with yeah. the, with the originals. But I, but I think kids so much. If you know the original story, you know the basics. Right. I think I think it's so much fun to look at these fractured fairy tales. And Thank there's you. so many different <laughs> versions, but there's so much fun and to see every author sort of take on what it is. Um, but you know what you think, you know, I always think of when you think of the original stories because um, there's a book that I really love out that's right now called Far, Far Away. I haven't read it, but I've heard you great things. You have to read yes, this book. Yes, I have but, to. <laughs> but the boy has the voice of Jacob Grimm in his ear all the time. Okay. And he has to do a quiz show where he has to answer <laughs> questions. But he's answering questions thinking of the Disney versions. And it's so interesting that you need to tell kids that that's not the original story, or right. we're going to base this off, and now we're going to go off in a different direction. So. Well, that's, you know, yeah. book three, uh, The Sink or Swim, which is the one that I based on uh, The Little Mermaid, right. that was the biggest issue for me, because the end, the Disney ending, and I hope I'm not giving it this away to anybody, <laughs> but the, the Disney ending is very, you know, happily very ever happy. after, oh, yeah. and the original is not. It is a very sad ending. It's very sad. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I had to play with that, that and, and that's why I like the idea of having two characters, a brother and a sister, sure. so one... No, Abby right. always knows the original ending, and the younger brother never does. He kind of always assumes it's just the Disney version. Okay, yeah, well, that's, that's that's fun. <laughs> so, where did the, where did the spark or the little germ start to start this series in the first place? Because you know you've written books for adults right. and, and young adults, but now this is your first middle grade series for those younger kids. You know that you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, age reader. So so where did that spark come from to start the first one, The Fairest of Them All? Well, I've had this idea for a really long time, basically since I was about two years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my mom used to tell me stories when I was younger, um, and I and I loved fractured fairy tales. Mm -hmm. um, when she used to tell me the story of uh, Princess and the Pea, and um, which was my favorite, my favorite one. Like I, apparently, I asked to hear it every every night, and um, I cha I would change it to instead of Princess and the Pea, I didn't, wasn't really a fan of vegetables. I said and said, you know, Princess and the M and M. Oh. Because when the, with the pea gets squashed, it doesn't really make yeah, any the pea sense would get to me. Squashed so squashed. M&M's harder. It's yeah. Quite, you know. I mean, not, the, not that a princess would be able to feel an M&M &M either. Well, an M&M &M can't melt either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I was always fracturing fairy tales. And I also loved, um, I used to, my mom used to tell me stories about, you know, a, a, there was a girl named Sarah and magic things happened uh. to her. So when and we used, then when I got older, we actually wrote out these books together, and I would oh. illustrate them. Oh, um, fun! And then when I got older, I was looking through these books, the you know fractured fairy tales, and also the magic stuff happens to Sarah. And I looked back and forth, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun if 
um, something magic happened to Sarah and she fell, or Sarah, and she fell into fairy tales yeah. and fractured them. And that's where the idea came from. Yeah, so the, so the mirror that they fall into yeah. and everything. Yeah. And it, it's so fun that you, the way you start off each book and how they fall into the mirror, it has, oh, a, it has a different scenario. <laughs> no, they're really fun. So Abby, you yes. know, our, our, our heroine, and, sorry, and her brother Jonah, are they based on any, are, is, is she part you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yes. They're, they, okay. she, Abby, was, when I started creating Abby, um, I wanted to make sure that she was different from Rachel, the, 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 um, the main character in my Magic in Manhattan mm -hmm. series. So I was trying really hard to make her different. And what I decided to do was really channel the bossiness that I, I was very, very bossy as a child. I'm still a little bit bossy, but I was really bossy when I was younger. And I have a, a younger sister, Aviva, who's seven years younger than I am. So I, I, I was just playing out the, the bossiness and that relationship. So I, I've never had a brother, but I tried to imagine what yeah. the relationship would have been like if Aviva had been a boy. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, fairy tales, and this is something, you know, fairy tales have been retold over and over again. You know, so many stories are sort of ageless. And, you know, we're sitting in this, the aisle right here where we have all right. our science fiction and <laughs> fantasy. A lot of those stories are, are kind of based on some fairy tales, even some of the more grimmer grim right. stories, you know. But what do you, what do you think, in, in, in your opinion, makes fairy tales, and, and when they're taken in new directions, are so appealing to readers that they can't get enough of that? Of the fairy tale? I mean, yeah. people just love... The ha I think the happily ever after. I think all the, these these fairy tales just strike something um, primal, you know, in in children and in you know in, in adults everywhere. Yeah. Um, I think what's fun for me about taking these fairy tales is you know, modernizing them. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to do this series also was because I loved fairy tales so much as a child. I loved Cinderella. I loved all these tales, but. I mean, the endings were, were not very, they didn't really have any girl power. And I, they, and I wanted to really yeah. change that in the versions yeah. that I created. And I have two daughters, and I tell them these fairy tales all the time, and we, we have a lot of discussions about them. Like, you know, well, you know, for Cinderella, for, or Snow White, for example. Right. You know, she, she is, you know, she dies, and then she's you know, just, the kiss was what brings her back to life, and it's very sad, and we, we, we really talk yeah. about this stuff. Yeah, right. Well, it's kind of like, I, th I think, modernizing them, too. And I think it's sort of the problem that I have with some literature, whether it's middle grade right. for kids or even young adult, is that girls who need rescuing all the time. Right, exactly. And that's, you know, you want to have more empowerment mm -hmm. for, for your heroines instead of girls that need rescuing. And we can probably name those YA series we can name right off the bat right. that are annoying, <laughs> right? But it's, it's so interesting that you're doing that because the fairy tales always, you know, the handsome prince always comes to the rescue right. in a lot of stories. Not so in my books. That's right, which is so great, which is so great. So, you know, in children's literature, you know, when you think about how close, when, when you sit down to, to write a new book in the series, mm -hmm. what, what, when you outline it and, and do it, or what aspects of the original story do you want to be true to? I mean, is it, there's sort of a rule that you create for yourself. Yes, I, the, I want to take the most important scene or the biggest, you know, the scene that changes the story or make the most essential scene mm -hmm. in the original story is what I try to use and change. Um, and if I, if I miss it somehow, then my editor will tell me, you've missed the scene. <laughs> well, in Rapunzel, which is the one, I just actually finished it, um, and it's called Bad Hair Day. And it will be <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I love that. That's <laughs> good. That's uh, good. Kind of like, it's in yeah. May. And I, uh, when I wrote my first outline, um, I never had the tower scene. And my editor you know, said to me, I, I think we're missing the opportunity here. We ha it, there really has to be this, the, the tower scene. Abby has to climb the hair. The reader is going to want to see that. It, right. It's the whole sure. point. It's the essential part of the story. Yeah. So, and she was totally right. And I, and I redid the outline and I, re, you know, I rethought the whole plot. And, and I think it, it paid off. Yeah. She was right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what, what was your favorite? A oh, fairy tale? tale? When you were young. <laughs> well, according to my mom, I loved Princess and the Pea. Okay. And I also really loved Twelve Dancing Princesses. Okay. And Snow White. Um, mostly I loved Snow White because she was the uh, princess with black hair and pale skin. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, I you know, saw yeah, myself right. in Snow White. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, have, do you have many boy readers that like this series? Because cause, cause there is a boy character, and he yeah. features pretty, pretty strongly in, in the whole series. Well, yeah. Because yeah, from what I could tell, I... I um, I haven't seen that many boys who read it by themselves, but a lot of moms read it to their, you know, son and daughter right. together. And they'd be great read alouds. Yes, yeah. and I've, I've, right. I've heard from a lot of moms that their sons love it. Um, but so, yeah, I'm definitely getting some boy readers, yeah. which is nice. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so you put such great humor in these. And in the action, I mean, they really do clip along, and I think that's what, why kids like them so much. Great. But is that hard to balance that, to make the humor and, and sort of the action, and but keeping true to some parts of the original story, but 
but making it your own. So is that is that a hard balance? Do you have to really re rework a lot of sections? Sometimes? Um, I do it for pace, definitely, yeah. to, to keep the action yeah. going. And then I also, you know, rework and rewrite. I add it many, many times to add in more jokes and things that are little little tweaks to make it a little bit funnier. Yeah. So middle grade books, yes. and then all your YA books. Yes. But you started your first book that you published in two thousand one was an adult book. Yes, Milk Club was <laughs> yes. that first book, and I think something was semi autobiographical. Yes, it was. Right? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that and your journey to becoming a published author. For sure. The first time. Um, well, what happened was. I, when I graduated from college, I knew I wanted to be a writer. I grew up in Montreal, um, and I decided that I would never be able to get published at a young age. This is before, I think, Aragon and all the yeah, other, there, right. there's been young writers lately, but I just said, okay, I want to get a job. I'm going to get a job in publishing. And I got a job uh, in the Harlequin, at Harlequin in the marketing department. Wow, that would be interesting. It, I <laughs> loved it. I just had so much fun, and I got to come up with, you know, cover concepts and marketing for books such as... Um, uh, what was the, the 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 Texas? Oh, the Texas. Uh, the, oh, the the Virgin Bride said, "Wow." Okay, <laughs> that was a real title. Very nice. Very um, nice. And the uh, Texas Sheiks were really popular. We had a whole best-selling oh, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I I had a great time. And then while I was there, I was also I just my my boyfriend had just broken up with me to go travel and backpack through Australia. And I and so I had no I had no boyfriend and I was dating up a storm and I yet I was also working at Harlequin. Harlequin right. um, and I just thought the juxtaposition between my job and my dating life was just too funny not to write to about. Write, write about. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I started my book with the lines jerk, 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 um, <laughs> which is all about my ex-boyfriend. And then uh, actually we got back together <laughs> and got married. Okay. Okay. And yes. do, you, do you still use that jerk, jerk, jerk? Well, everyone in our <laughs> wedding did. Every wedding speech started with the line jerk, jerk, jerk. Oh, that's a right. He's actually, he's a sweetheart, of course. Yes, the of father course. of my daughter. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, that's great. So, you know, I think for me, mm -hmm. I know you more as a YA author. Right. I mean, those are the books that I've, I've really been in. But you know what? And the Magic in Manhattan series, right. you know, that series. And then Give Me a Call, which I love oh, so much. I you. love that. I love the concept of that book. I thought it was so unique. It was a great book to talk to other people about. Thank you. And, and the 10 Things We Did, right. that which is so great. Because I think that book, to me, just shows, it, it's sort of that growing up process, but you know, you make your mistakes and, right. and things things happen. But what's the process? You know, finding adults, writing for young adults, or <laughs> writing for middle grade. Is it a conscious decision that you do when you sit down to write? Except for a series, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But what do you change up? Or is it just the story that comes first? And I said, you know, this is going to be a great one for young adults. Yes, it is totally yeah. the story. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, whatever after, I just, I knew I had that concept and I just thought it was, it was seven to 12 was the right age for this, right. for the story. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, I always knew I wanted to write YA and, and middle grade. The adult thing, I kind of fell into it when I was at Harlequin. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, yeah. that wasn't what I wanted necessarily to do. Sure. Um, but I just, it, I always knew my heart was always in, you know, young adults and middle grade. Yeah. So growing up in Montreal yes. and graduating from McGill yes. and you English literature, I yes, read? yes, okay, and then you know, then you move to New York and, yeah. and you work at Harlequin. Is there? I've always wondered, and you know, there's so many authors that that Canadian authors, and is there any difference that you notice? Are, are readers readers? Are authors authors? And and what Canadians and U.S. readers want to read? Or do you see a difference in the markets or in publishing for that? Interesting. Um, yeah. Well, I mean. I, when I worked at Harlequin, I was in Toronto. It was right. kind of strange because Toronto is the head office, yet it's yeah, such an American. Right. You wouldn't, is, no one would know that, right? No, no one knows that. No, right. it, it's. I mean, yeah. you, they sell the American romantic dream. Um, yeah, right. I haven't found really a difference between the two countries, yeah. uh, in terms of the readers. Or I, I, that's an interesting question that yeah. I haven't really, I haven't really noticed. I mean, yeah. I, I find a lot of Canadian authors publish exclusively in Canada. Right, um, right. Versus, you know, American authors will will we'll cro we'll yeah cross will cross it. more. Yeah, and right. I, but um, I haven't really I haven't really noticed. I mean, I noticed a difference. Growing up, like my favorite author was Mar or one of them was Margaret Atwood, um, because you know we studied well, her. Yeah. Um, and yeah. my my absolute favorite children's author was Gordon Corman, who's also <laughs> Canadian. That's right. Yes. That's so interesting. But it wasn't a conscious choice. Did you? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, and it was. I read his okay. books, and then he came to talk to my school. Oh, okay. And I remember when he he was like. 14 years old when he came to, to my yeah, school. I mean, yeah, yeah, he, he was, started. He was, yeah, he was a child. Right? Yeah, he really was. Yeah, he was. And he came to, when I was in the third grade, and he came to talk to us. And I was so, you know, I, he was already one of my favorite authors. Yeah. And then I remember thinking, 
you know, he was so inspiring that if he could do it, I could do it too. So it was kind of. Right. I have a feeling he's inspired other Oh, I'm sure he's I would, yeah. Yeah, tons of YA authors I know grew up on him and, um, mm. you know, Judy Bloom especially, yeah. Sure, sure. So your mom yes. is, is a romance yes. author. Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, Alyssa Ambrose, yes. right? Mm-hmm. What was it like growing up with a mom who's writing, a, a writer for one, one mm -hmm. thing, but also writing romance? And what, what advice, what did you learn from her? Or, and, and does she look at your work now when you finish something? Yes, uh, she definitely yeah. does. But what's, what's funny is that she, my mom was, was actually a computer programmer my whole life. She only this became her, a romance. her other life. It, it's true. <laughs> and she yeah. only started writing. She was always a writer and a reader. Um, but she only published her first book actually after I published my first book. Oh, oh really? Yeah, See, so she, oh, I no. didn't, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so Maybe you inspired her. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think. Um, well, yeah. she, she always inspired me to write. I mean, it was such yeah. a dream of hers. Sure. And that she was always the one reading, you know, reading oh, to so me. We, we've all, she was yeah. always my first editor on anything. Um, she edits most of my books and um, oh, that's great. yeah, she's one of my first readers on everything. Have you guys ever done a joint event together? Yes, we did. Oh, that's well, fun. She lives in Arizona and okay. um, we, we, we uh, did one at, at Changing Hands. Oh, she, love, yeah. oh Gail yeah. and Bobby are, are good ago. friends of mine at Changing Hands. Yeah. They're such a great star. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you talked about working at Harlequin. Mm -hmm. So then cover art, you mentioned yeah. cover art. <laughs> yeah. How important is cover art to you? And, and it, I see how important it is, especially for young adult, but how important is to you? And do you get, do you get, a, do you get a chance to approve or disapprove of a cover for your um, own book? No, I mean, I, the whatever after art I love. Yeah. I mean, when I even, every cover that's come, that, that when it gets emailed to me, I say, this is amazing, fantastic. Yeah. I don't think I had any comments on any of the whatever after books. I mm -hmm. love them so much. Yeah, yeah, um, but no, I don't have any say, <laughs> really. Uh, I, I have, I, I think they, when they send it to me, if I, you know, really hate a cover, then, then they'll do something then, about it. But yeah, I, I don't have a cover approval or sure, anything like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, I do think it's important, yeah. um, you know, probably more important than it should be, but that's that's what happens. Book, you know, books are judged by their cover. Well, they are, and many yeah. people will purchase a book because of what's on the cover. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. right. So. I notice you do a lot of, there's different social networking things right. that you do. And I know it's I'm changed. everywhere. <laughs> I know you're everywhere. And I saw that. Um, Instagram now, too. Right. And I I'll, love Instagram. I know. <laughs> we use Instagram here, too. But just wondering, you know, how has that changed for you since you started writing right. your first book published in 2001? Yeah. You know, even in 12 years, what has changed for authors and the way they communicate socially like this? And also, not just with readers, but with other authors. And how has that changed your life? Because it can be a time suck. You know, I, I know, totally. You know, it's funny because I'm thinking back uh, when was the, what was the first social network that I went on, and I just remembered that it was actually John Green who told oh. me that I should go on MySpace. Okay? okay, and this maybe was in 2006, I guess, 2005, yeah. and yeah. and I did, and I I had never seen anything like that, and I right. I just love I loved it, and it was just so much fun to connect with readers. I mean, as a sure. I remember the first. I mean, Gordon Corman was one of the first authors I met, but then also I met Margaret Atwood at a signing, and I wasn't able to communicate, and, and I never wrote an author a letter. Yeah. And now I mean, I, I just get these e emails all the time, and you know, hellos, and I'm also on Wattpad now, and and I, I'm just I'm. I'm I'm pretty much everywhere, and I think it, it has changed because you really get to connect and talk to your readers, right. and you get immediate sure. feedback in a way that you didn't before. Right. Um, yeah, no, I, I love it. But I think that community, and I think I think it makes readers have more access to the authors that they really love to read. Yes. But also, too, I think it's, and I think especially with young adult, mm -hmm. I think young adult and maybe romance readers and authors, there's such a community. Yes. It's such a friendly, I mean, everybody, they're instant friends when you meet them. Do you find that to be true in those communities, you know, whether it's its romance or young adult? I think between other authors? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I It's I, extremely yeah. supportive community. Well, I think writing mm -hmm. is, you know, such an isolating business. Um, and I, I've never really had to, to go through that because of all these social networks that I see yeah, other writers right. all the time. If I'm, you know, Twitter or Facebook, or we just know that we're all out there. And it's really, it really is an amazing and supportive, right. supportive sure, group. Sure. So, what are you working now? Oh. I know you mentioned. Okay, we have. Tell us about the next book in the series. Okay, well, the next but then one. also your next young adult. Okay. Novel. Well, Bad Hair Day is uh, is they fall into Rapunzel, um, right. and I'm really excited about that one. And then uh, the next one in the Whatever After series, um, we're still working on a title, but uh, it'll be um, I think Beauty and the Beast. Oh, good. So that's okay, exciting. Great, and then great. I have um, Don't Even Think About It, a new YA book that's coming out this March. Um, and that is about a group of high school students who um, get their flu shots, but there's a problem with the flu shot, and they all get ESP. 
So, oh, <laughs> yes. interesting. Um, so it was fun to write, and it's it's written in first person plural, so to kind of give you the sense of everyone Every hearing oh each God. other's thoughts. And oh, that's it, so it was fun. And oh so I'm I'm God. working on the sequel to that now, which is Think Twice, and that'll be out the following summer. Oh, how cool! So were you were you kind of like going crazy thinking about everybody? <laughs> thinking about I was everybody? just thinking about today how I wish that I could hear what other people are thinking. No it would kidding. be such a fun. I mean, it would be fun, but at the same time. And do you really want to know you what other know. people are thinking? Really I don't know. It's sort of like Sookie Stackhouse. You right, don't want exactly. to know what people really, are thinking. You don't want yeah, to know. You don't yeah. want to know what people are thinking. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. A great. Oh, my God. A great vehicle <laughs> for storytelling and getting to know characters. That sounds great. Okay. So, Sarah, yes. I end these interviews a little quiz. Okay. Okay. No pressure. Oh. You know all the answers. Oh, okay. This okay. is sort of like lightning round, sort of many literary questions, but you know the answers. Okay. okay? <laughs> so, all right, you're guaranteed an A++. Plus plus, okay? okay. All right. What was your favorite book as a child when you were young? Um, this can't be happening at McDonald's Hall. Okay. Yeah. I got to tell Gordon Kern yeah. about that. Oh, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that's true. Okay. Favorite book in high school? Something that has still stayed with you? Uh, at Cat's Eye. Oh, okay. Yeah. And how about something when you were at McGill that you read that, you know, even. White even Noise. Oh, really? Yeah. I loved White Noise. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I read it for a class yeah. and I just was blown away okay. by it. Yeah. Don Zalola. Yeah. Yeah. How about, a, how about a book you read for its cover? Sorry for, for its, its cover. cover. <gasps> now that we talked about covers. Um, that's a great question. Or even a book that you love its cover. Oh, I'm looking at Lauren Miracle's cover right there, and I love the, yeah. uh, the oh, infinite. The one, yeah, the and I read the book. I, but I great. can't say I read it for the cover because I read it in manuscript. But it is a great cover. But it is a, it is a gorgeous cover, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. How about a book you've been an evangelist for? Something you read recently you could not tell enough people. Well, uh, right to. now for um, uh, for E. Lockhart's new uh, We Were Liars. I, I, oh, it's yeah. amazing, and yeah. it hasn't doesn't come out till it May. It doesn't come out yet, but, yeah, it's, but it is yeah. fantastic. Good choice. Okay, how about, what would you call a guilty pleasure read? Ooh. <laughs> and it, it could be anything. It could be a magazine. It could be anything. Um, I read EW a lot. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly. I do too, yeah. but I don't that I guess guilty. I thought a guilty pleasure. I don't really, I don't know if I believe in the term guilty pleasure. Good. I like, yeah, I like that because answer. Because I, like I, that I think answer. that I, you know, it's, it's okay. pleasure should never be guilty. That's right. That's right. Okay, how about the joy that you got the first time you read a book because it was just so amazing. If you could repeat that joy, what book would that be? Any time in your life. Well, I'm thinking another book that I loved as a child uh, was uh, Lois Duncan stuff. Oh, and I remember yeah. the first time I bought one of her, I bought one of her books. I think it was the Summer of Fear, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I bought it at a garage sale, and it was the first time I'd read a um, a, like a thriller. Thriller. And I yeah. was blown Dubai, away yeah. by thrillers and horror thrillers. I loved it. Okay. Okay. What um, w what book have you enjoyed sharing with your daughter? Oh, um, the uh, paperback princess. We, uh, we oh, <laughs> another Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Um, and we we read a lot. We read everything. Um, oh, you know, that's we're great. we're just starting to read the fairy tales now. Um, oh, also, cool. oh, that's, that's which that's yes, yeah, so which is and she's only four. My older one's four, and my younger one's one. Oh, so. one. Okay, so one. I've mean, read yeah. my Good Night Moon to the younger one about seven thousand times. Fine, as we all <laughs> and Dear do. Zoo, she's obsessed with Dear Zoo with the little flaps. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's a great. <laughs> okay, and what are you reading now? Um, I'm reading um, a book, an education book, actually. I'm reading uh, 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 How Children Succeed. <laughs> oh, no, that's a really good one. Yeah, I, I'm really liking it. Yeah, I, I don't read that much nonfiction, to be honest, yeah. but um, I, I was, I, I, no, how could I resist really that one. title? So I, no, I just, that's I, a, that's I, yeah. That's a really good one. That's a good one. Yeah, and I just, I, I just finished um, uh, The First Affair, uh, which mm. by, by the, the authors wrote The Nanny Diaries, and I yeah. really like that, too. Great conversation about fairy tales and how we can fracture them up with Sarah Milnowski with her new book in the series Whatever After. It's called Dream On. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed.